The beauty of a thunned egg is in the eye of the beholder. I've cut eggs before for people who looked at them and didn't think much of them that I thought they were just beautiful and, the other, and vice versa. So it's just a matter of taste. But the fact that people go dig their own here makes them a treasure, which gives them more beauty even than they would normally have. Today, Aaron Roden is looking for thunder eggs at Richardson's Rock Ranch in Central Oregon. No one knows exactly how thunder eggs are formed. Scientists hypothesize that they develop from rare and gas-rich lava flows from the ancient Cascade Mountains. The lava cooled quickly, trapping air bubbles. Over thousands of years, mineral-rich water seeped into the cavities, filling the space and solidifying. Jasper, opal, quartz, and agate are some of the most common minerals in a thunder egg. The Native Americans had a different explanation of how thunder eggs were formed. The native legend of the thunder eggs were that the gods of the mountains were fighting and they would constantly bicker and fight and they would run around on their legs. And the great mountain god took the legs away from them and made them sit down and behave themselves. So then they started shooting rocks across back and forth at each other and those were the thunder eggs. And when they'd spew out of the top of the mountain, a great clap of thunder would happen. And thus the thunder eggs. Thunder eggs develop underneath a layer of perlite, a type of rock that is loose and flaky. Thunder eggs run in size from the size of a pea to the largest one ever taken off the ranch, which was 1,700 pounds. But most are about the size of a baseball. Now Erin has gathered a pile of thunder eggs and is going to the lapidary to cut and polish her findings. The saws that we cut in are lapidary saws. They run with oil as a coolant and a circular diamond blade. The thunder egg is put in a vise in the saw and then it's moved over by the blade. We close the lid and then the saw is self-feeding so it feeds the rock through the blade and then it opens it up. After cutting the thunder egg, Erin begins the polishing process. She dips the thunder egg in water to make sure it doesn't overheat and crack. She then moves from the 60 grit to a grinder with a finer grit for the second polish. From the 220 grinder, Aaron moves to an even finer 400 grit grinder. After she finishes grinding, Aaron uses cerium oxide on a spinning carpet mat to put the final polish on the thunder egg. People have really come to appreciate that here in Central Oregon we have something unique. The thunder eggs are here, and anywhere else in the world the thunder eggs are very rare. I mean, this is the place they're at. I don't think a person could ever get tired of the rocks because every day you walk by and see something you may not have noticed the day before. I'm especially one that will walk by and see a thunder egg and reach down and get it and go cut it to see what's in it because I just can't, you know, I just have to know. <laughs>